Hey yo, Antonio. Do you ever wake up in the morning and find crusts on your eyelids? I know I certainly have. I usually just flake them off and think not much of it. But then again, there are times when I get more than usual and think to myself, why? So in this video, we'll be going over what sleep crusts are, why we get them, and I also want to share with you why we sometimes get more than usual and what it could mean for your eyes. Sleep crusts are made up of a collection of your tears, dead skin cells, and mucus. But before we can understand how this all comes together, first, let's cover some basics. The eye and eyelid work together to provide vision that is essential for our daily lives. The front part of the eye, which is known as the cornea, bends light onto the retina so that things are in focus. And the eyelid helps protect and maintain the cornea by producing tears so it doesn't get damaged. The cornea can be divided into three layers, the brittle and expendable epithelium, the meaty and robust stroma, and the delicate and fragile endothelium. For the purpose of this video, we will focus on the outermost layer. This is because the stroma and endothelium do not really change much as we age, but the epithelium on the other hand is undergoing constant maintenance. In fact, it is believed that every 48 hours a new epithelial layer is formed, replacing the old one. And this is where we get the first piece of our puzzle, dead skin cells, mainly from the epithelium. It is normal for us to have some cell loss from blinking and other external factors, but in the case where there is an increase in the number of cells lost, whether it be from contact lens overwear or excessive eye rubbing, you may find yourself having a few more crusts in the morning. To minimize this, make sure you take adequate breaks in between contact lens wear and try to avoid areas that contain a lot of dust, pollen or smoke as little particles in the air can irritate the surface and lead to subsequent damage. In an effort to protect itself, the eye will produce tears. The thing that a lot of people don't know about our tears is that it's actually a mixture of three different things. Mucin, water, and oil. Mucin is a molecule that plays a critical role in protecting our eyes from allergies and infections. But it also has the added benefit of being hydrophilic, which is good because our eyes need water to stay hydrated. This water is produced by the lacrimal gland, which is tucked away just behind the upper part of our eyelid. And to prevent the water from drying out, we have ourselves a layer of oil or mabum that is produced by the mabomian gland. These layers are also being constantly replenished where new tears replace old ones. And this is where we get the final pieces of our puzzle. Mucus and water from our tears, mixed with the dead skin cells from the epithelium, combine to form what is known as room. In normal waking hours, this will be drained by the lacrimal ducts, where every time we blink, a small amount of room is pumped out of the system. During sleeping hours, however, we do not blink, and therefore there is an accumulation of this stuff in the corners of our eyes. Dried room is what is commonly referred to as sleep, or eye boogers. I've also heard other terms like eye goop or gunk, but if you have any other terms that you use to describe this, then feel free to drop a comment down below. I'd be curious to know what you guys call it. I've also seen eye boogers in the eyes of cats and dogs, but we know now that they are normal and where they come from. It's only when you find too many of them that it becomes a problem. Speaking of which, what does it mean when you get more than usual? If we refer back to our puzzle, then we know that we get more crusts when any one of these pieces are produced in abundance. The most common form that I find is actually evaporative dry eye. This is a topic that I covered extensively in this video, to which the solution in most cases is hot compressors. But basically, when there is an irritation to the eye, which include airborne particles, lack of blinking and eye rubbing, it can lead to a blockage of the mabomian glands. A lack of mabum is the direct cause of our eyes drying out quicker than normal, which exposes the corneal epithelium to be unprotected. 
The corneal epithelium then signals to the brain that there has been a breach in the tear film, to which then the lacrimal gland produces more water to make up for the loss. An overexposed cornea, alongside the overproduction of tears, will subsequently lead to more room being produced, which you may find as more crusts in the morning. Severe cases of this could come in the form of allergies, or even infections, to which the sequence of events are very similar. Mucin is a really good barrier for the eye, where it binds to the allergen or the microorganism, threatening to infect it. If you start to notice things like having more crusts on consecutive days in a row, or even pain or redness, then I would seek the help of an optometrist, as they can properly examine the eyes under a slit lamp to find the exact cause and come up with a management plan. But there you have it, a quick video on what sleep crusts are and why we get them. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to write them down below. If you've learned something new, or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.